with Robert Burke of Robert Burke Games. So let's just get this started. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. I'm Robert Burke. I'm an independent uh, board game designer from Charlotte, North Carolina area. I've got five published games right now, working on a couple more. So you said you have five published games. Can you mm -hmm. tell us what they yeah, are? Yeah, I've got a, a family game called Cartoona. It's a cartoon creature building game where you're trying to build wacky cartoon characters and score points. Uh, there's a, an expansion for that uh, where you can add even more wacky creatures to it. Uh, I've got a game called uh, Gnomes. Uh, the Great Sweeping of Amawan. That game is a storytelling game for kids. It's more kind of like a role-playing uh, game for small children uh, to go hunt for, for gnomes in your backyard. So that's an interesting one. I've got one called the Offensive Band Name Generator, which is not a children's game. I would not play that with children at all. I would not play with people who are easily offended. You're basically, you've got word cards and you're trying to come up with names for bands, like come up with a name for a punk rock band, for example, and you put the words together to come up with a name and try to get the, the funniest or best name for that band. Uh, so that's another one I have. I have one called Battle for Souls, which is a card game uh, where one side is playing heaven, one side is playing hell, and you're battling over uh, Soul, human souls to score victory points uh, to win the game. Um, I also have one called Draco Magi that I did with Richard Lanius. That's in production right now in China. It will be finished the 15th of July and then it's going to be on the boat over to America and we're going to distribute those out to all the Kickstarter backers first and then the pre-orders um, and then it'll be available for, for sale through all the regular distribution channels. Um, it sounds yep. like you've actually got a lot of stuff going on there. Um, with so many games there, how long has Robert Burke Games been around? I started designing games in 2012, so just just a couple of years, two and a half years, I think so far. Uh, I've been I've been designing and publishing my own games. That's an impressive number of games in that that short period. Yeah, of time. But some of them aren't so good, so they don't really count. <laughs> <laughs> so. With that many games, I'm sure you've got some other things in the pipeline right now. I do, I do. I have a card game I'm working on with Steve Avery, who did uh, Nothing Personal with Tom Vassell, and that game is a deduction game. There's a traitor in the game. You are a party of adventurers. Traditional fantasy tropes like uh, rogues and clerics and wizards and fighters, but one of those party members is a doppelganger. And you are trying to complete quests, and you're throwing in items that you need the quest to succeed. And so a party goes out to try and finish the quest, but if you happen to bring the doppelganger along, there's ways they can fail the quest. And that doppelganger can turn other party members into doppelgangers. So it's kind of a quick trader game, all card based. So we're working on that one. And I'm also working on a World War II bluffing game called Operation Faust. And in that one, that one takes place in occupied France during World War II. And you are trying to save priceless works of art from the Third Reich. Who is, who is looting all the treasures of Europe. So you're trying to earn money by bluffing to, to buy these artworks on the black market. And the first player that earns a million dollars in black market value in art wins the game. Uh, but there's no player elimination in it. Um, and there's a lot of theme. There's a lot of theme tied to this, even though it's a very light bluffing game that's meant just to create a lot of fun, uh, fun times for up to eight players. Yeah, that's actually a really neat idea for a theme because there's not Thank a whole you. lot of kind of light World War II games. Yeah. Typically, you know, yeah, World War II you. is usually sort of a yeah. you know a big thing to a big thing to accomplish. Right. My um, father-in-law actually, he's a huge World War II buff, and he had this idea. He's like, you need to do a game about this, and he told me about the special unit that Hitler had to actually go loot the art. They were called the ERR, and that got me very interested in the theme. And I started working on this, and then the movie came out, The Monuments Men which is based on this whole part of history. So I don't know, the movie didn't, I don't think it did great, um, but it was kind of neat that it was kind of happening at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, I guess, what inspired you to make that game, what actually got you into designing games in the first place? My first game, Cartoona, got me into designing games because uh, I was doing artwork for years before that and I was doing those cartoon characters that you see in Cartoona. So that's what got me started because I had an idea to put my creatures on tiles and let players put them together. So I got the idea for that game and went ahead and did it 
and that's when I discovered all these other wonderful games that are out there, and I, I fell down the rabbit hole really deep. <laughs> and I, I don't think I'm going to escape now, but well, no. I'm, uh, I'm in there. With, right. with six games already done and right. a few more in the pipeline, you're... You're, you're pretty I'm, well entrenched now. Yeah, I'm having fun. It's fun. It's my new creative outlet for myself, you know, so I'm very, I, I just love designing games and meeting gamers and playtesting games and, and going to conventions. It's been a lot of fun for me. Well, I know I picked up a couple of those games last year and I really enjoyed them and I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.